Well, I got a couple more of these 12 star forest flags and you can see one of them is out there. I just replaced it and the flag I had out there was actually flying during Hurricane Irma and it was up there for about a year and a half. So these are pretty durable cut up flags and the only thing that happened to it was the edge got frayed on the outside. I'm um, actually sewing it up but I changed it. I put a new one up there and I ordered a couple more from uh, Sons of Confederate Veterans and this is about the only place I could really see this is the only part that actually um, frayed on it. You can see it's got one, two, three, four stitches in it, but eventually, you know, something's going to fall apart on the flag. Especially, you know, it survived Hurricane Irma. Fine. These are pretty strong flags. They're like woven. You could tell they're like a woven material. They're not that real thin polyester stuff. So, and they got a very good price on flags, too. Um, you don't need to be a member to get the flag. Um, usually they're 10 bucks each, but the forest flag is 25 each. That's the one. It doesn't have a star in the middle. And one thing too, I could say with the forest flag, you don't have to worry about flying it upside down because either way you flip it around, the stars are orientated the same way. You know, with the other flags, you got to make sure that star in the middle is pointed up. Sometimes I, you know, I made that mistake before a couple times. Um, actually, I have a book that I ordered from the Sons of Confederacy because. Um, my heritage actually goes back to South Carolina, right where actually where Sermon went right through. My family's farms were in Marlboro and, well, Darlington, Marlboro County, and I think Florence County, but mainly Darlington, I think, Darlington and Marlboro County. And Sermon actually went right through there after he cut his swath through Georgia, from Atlanta down to Savannah, and they wrecked havoc on South Carolina, probably more so than Georgia because South Carolina was the one to secede. Now the forest flag is generally associated with Nathan Bedford Forest of Tennessee. You know, I'm not 110% sure why there's 12 stars. I've been hearing a lot of different stories. You know, it left out one state he didn't consider to be a part of the Confederacy. But I do know that they were adding stars to the Confederate flag. And I know this is not the official flag of the government of the, you know, the Confederate States of America, um, actually the one that back there, I don't know if you can see it, that would be the third national right there. That would be one of the official ones, that would be the last one, the one I like the best. But the flag that flew in battle all the time was, you know, the, um, the Southern Cross. So, and originally, you know, the first flag that flew in battle looked a little bit like the American flag because it had three broad stripes. There's a lot of confusion, so they went with the Southern Cross or the Cross of St. Andrew or the Scottish Cross or whatever. But uh, actually, the one that would be from my ancestry, well, at least one of them, was the 8th Regiment. And this flag, it's kind of a, a drawing of it, but the actual flag is all shot up and everything. It's uh, surprised he survived. There's only 53 that were survivors. That's including all the replacements that were put into the unit in that regiment. The other one was the 21st Regiment. Pretty much you always see the word volunteers too. You notice that? I don't know, if it's, I don't know what the heck it says on here. Volunteers. 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 You see this would have been like more like the original first um, CSA flag. Volunteers. See that? These are real volunteers. These weren't, you know, getting paid a lot of money in health care and getting my college paid for, like today. Volunteers. 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 See the word? These were like true 1776 patriots. And, you know, the New World Order just hates them today. That's what's really going on. Because they fought for their own individual rights. Their own economic freedoms. Well, yeah, and this would have been from Timminsville. Um, well, the unit he was in, my one of my other ancestors, the unit he was in was the Timminsville Minutemen, basically named after, you know, be ready in a minute. It might have been this one, because they're both 21st.
a little bit confused about that. <laughs> Water's 221st. Maybe it's uh, just two different flag representations. But um, the forest flag that you get from, um, um, actually there's three, re re three versions of the 21st Regiment flag. But the forest flag that you get from the Sons of Confederate Veterans will run you $25 each. Um, they're not commonly available in a lot of places. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons I heard, this might be BS though, but I think after a while it became, it might not be BS, maybe that wasn't the original reason why General Forrest adopted the flag, the 12 star. But I think after a while it became like a trademark of his unit. And, you know, it was more like, you know, it's us. It's sort of like the Marine Corps and the Yellow Legs. They were used to, you know, the North Koreans used to call them the Yellow Legs in uh, Korea because they knew they had the, the white leggings and they knew the Yellow Legs were coming. They were like, oh shit, we got to get the hell out of here. Basically, when uh, you saw the 12 star flag flying, you know, it was pretty much the end for um, the Yankees. As a matter of fact, German, General Sherman and um, Ulysses S. Grant both feared Forrest. Forrest was uneducated, but he was smart. Doesn't mean you know you didn't go to you didn't go to all the military schools like West Point and everything, but he was very 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 intelligent. So I'm not 100 percent sure why there is a 12 star, and uh, you know I tried to research it. I heard various various reasons. One, any one of them is good, but after a while I think it just became the trademark of General Forrest. Now General Forrest was the only um, one on either side of the war, whether it was. Um, the Union or Confederate side that rose from the rank of private all the way up to lieutenant general. How's that? So, yeah, he sure as hell knew what he was doing. So, <laughs> and I know what he was accused of later. Man, they really they smeared this guy's reputation left and right. But the, the re reconstruction, you know, the organization that was created in the South was to basically keep the carpetbaggers and scallywags and other haters that were destroying the South and basically using them like, I don't know, the whole South was basically a, a gulag colony of the North. You know, they had a secret organization that was formed for that reason. I don't want to mention it because YouTube will go ballistic. But, you know, I think, I know Forrest wasn't one of the original members or original founders, but I think he was in it afterwards, so, you know. But, you know, it wasn't the same back then as it morphed into later on. You know, that's the thing. So, you got to remember that. So, you know, because they're using everything they possibly can to disparage and discredit the South and what the Southern cause was about. So, you know, what the hell can I tell you, man? Got to keep fighting them with knowledge, but eventually it's not going to be just knowledge. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> be fighting with voice scripts. Anyway, or channel locks. But anyway, the, you know, the deal is, um, don't be afraid, don't fear the garbage, and, um, you know, stick with the truth and unabashedly stick with the truth. You know, you know you're going to win or lose, but either way, if you kowtow down to the, uh, the vicious communists that hate this flag, that's basically what it is. This flag is actually, this flag actually represents a lot of a basic, um, individual rights of all people to pursue their own economic you know uh, endeavors and it's going against the collectivists whereby the collectivists say you know we 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 a government will distribute redistribute the wealth pretty much if you look at anybody who's against this flag they're pretty much fall into that category of some type of collectivist or they're, they're socialistic leaning very much so and unfortunately you know a lot of people that are you know pro-confederate you know they fall on this thing with the heritage stuff and I'm like you know heritage isn't all the whole 90 yards it's just a very minor part of it heritage is one facet of many Basically, this flag really stands for what America was founded about in the first place. And it seems like, I don't know, if you never fought for America or if your ancestors never fought for a real America, you're never going to understand what this flag's about. Yeah. You know, the 
American experiment has always been something that has been unique in the world. It's the first time we actually freaking sent back the New World Order and the elite. And when this the South lost, that was a victory for the elite. But the South just fighting the elite was set them back a number of decades. There's no doubt about it. That's why they hate this flag, man. Tavistock, the CIA, the Democratic FBI, the whole nine yards. They, none of them like this flag. Don't go thinking they're pro-USA and pro-Confederate. Pretty much everybody in our established government, whether it's in the UK or in the United States, is a collectivist. Your bureaucrat on the grain doll for pay, entitlements, bennies, and career. These people that fought for this flag, not just the 12 star, but the 13 star and other variants of it, they truly were volunteers. You look at this word, volunteer, South Carolina, volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. You know, we don't have volunteers today. We got mercenaries. We got people that are paid to be in the military. These were volunteers. Volunteers. So, pretty much you see the word written in there pretty much all the time. What they were. Beauregard. <laughs> Beauregard actually is the one that designed this flag too. Volunteers. 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 Okay. Despite the flag being different, South Carolina volunteers, volunteers. Doesn't say the word volunteers. Kings Mountain Guards, South. But you know, these were all volunteers. Like, like our ancestors. See? We will be free. So you understand what the war was about. That pretty much sums it up. You know, though this flag would never get the psychological connotations of this flag due to the major media brainwashing. Like our ancestors, we will be free. That really sums up what the war between the states or the war for southern southern independence was about. So I'll leave you with that thought.